Hi, I'm going to call this a follow-up to my last video on American Bully XLs and the legal situation around them. If you don't know, um, well, where have you been? This has been a big story in the UK. Uh, basically, American Bully XLs are a controversial breed of dog, which is a very powerful bull-type dog. Um, and... Uh, these one source I've come across is that they may all be descended from one individual male called Killer Kimbo. Um, bear in mind that name, Killer Kimbo, which was uh, goes back to Los Angeles in 2004. So it's a relatively new breed. And I think that's significant. You know, other dog breeds that may at one point or another have had notoriety, even they're older, like Staffordshire Bull Terriers or Dobermans or Rockweilers, but um, 2004, so it's a relatively new breed. Um, Killer Kimbo, you know, very often what I've noticed about these dogs is, I think the name of the dogs, this might sound a little superstitious, but when people are naming their pets things like uh, Killer, Psycho, Beast, you know, you have to question the moral compass. You have to really wonder what, what sort of message are they trying to send out if they're naming their pet Psycho. As I came across in one um, one case, uh, so there's a few different sources I'm using here, so I'm just kind of balancing balancing out a bit. Uh, this is from the I newspaper, 16th of September. If you can see that, and then the uh, Daily Mirror, which is also the uh, 16th of September. So it's went ahead now. Uh, this breed is being banned by the end of the year. I, I welcome it. I think it's long overdue, but I absolutely welcome it. I think it's wholly justified. Um, I'm just going to paraphrase Oliver Duff, the editor of the uh, I, because I think he raises a very good um, piece here, or he he puts forward a very good argument. Um, I'm just going to read this. It's not too long. Uh, if you own an XL bully dog, you shouldn't. I love dogs, but the XL bully is not suitable for domestic ownership. These are big animals, up to 60 kilos, and some can be highly aggressive. Not all of them, but enough. If they attack, they cannot be contained by unarmed humans. Because they are so powerful, their injuries are much worse. Do take my word for it. Listen to surgeons who operate on the victims. And I've seen those quotation surgeons who have seen firsthand what these dogs are capable of. More serious than other dog bites, apparently. So the government's proposed ban is a proportionate response to the threat they pose. Last night's statement from vets and animal charities, including the RSPCA, misses the point entirely. Of course, unscrupulous breeders and bad owners are at fault, not the creatures themselves. Dog bites are increasing in the UK and without tougher action against dodgy breeders and owners, that won't change. There the charities are correct. Um... But when a dog breed is implicated in so many fatal attacks against adults and children in such a short space of time, a ban is justified. Lack of data? Question mark. Try telling that to the family of Ian Price, 52, from Stonehill near Walsall, who was killed on Thursday afternoon trying to protect his elderly mother from two XL bullies. Is Ian a valid data point? Or the family of Jack Liz, 10, from Carefilly, killed by an XL bully called Beast? Or St. Helen's toddler, Bella Ray Birch, who died aged 17 months, one week after a family bought an XL bully. The list goes on. If other dangerous dog breeds like pit bulls and doggo argentinos were not already banned, the problem would be worse. Don't tar all XL bullies with the same brush, sure. But until human morons require a license, criminalising ownership is the only way to stop XL bullies killing. I think he's absolutely right. The Daily Mirror also takes a hardline stance, so they say they've been campaigning about it. And I think of enough time to read out their editorial as well, if you bear with me. Incidentally, in the Ian Price incident in the village of Stonehill in St Staffordshire, those dogs involved in his attack had apparently, and they ripped his clothes off, that was the force of the attack, had apparently terrorised that village and others had complained about it. So why weren't they confiscated? Um, well, of course, they weren't on the dangerous dogs list, that's why. But they are now. Um, if we could just get the piece from the mirror, just bear with me a second. Dogs ban not enough. This paper first demanded action against the scourge of dangerous dogs in 2021. For two years we have documented the horrific deaths and injuries caused by the pets. We repeatedly warned uh, more people would die unless the government tightened the laws. 
Finally, PM Rishi Sunak has listened. While we welcome his pledge to ban XL bullies, it is dispiriting to think of the lives that could have been saved had he acted sooner. Since we launched our campaign, more than 18 people have died in dog attacks, including Ian Price, who was killed on Thursday. Having belatedly recognised the need for action, Mr Sunak should seize this opportunity to overhaul the Dangerous Dogs Act. Banning one breed is not enough. It fails to address the problem posed by the crossbreeding of XL bullies and other risky dogs. If the government is serious about ending this menace, it must bring in tougher penalties for irresponsible owners, tamp down on all licensed breeders and properly enforce the law. Um, you know, I've been hearing, since this has been a prominent issue, I've been hearing of some truly shocking things. For example, dog attacks resulting in absolutely no legal consequences because the dog involved wasn't on the Dangerous Dogs Act. Um, that's a disgrace. I think definitely there are bad people out there who weaponize animals and to use them um, as part of a gang or to intimidate um, because certain breeds, you know, look tough. They, they have that intimidating look about them. Uh, I heard of one case of a man who was attacked in Birmingham uh, when some thugs on these pit bull terriers onto him, and whether he was a rival of them or what, whatever. It's it shows what sort of people are out there. Um, but you know, one of the main arguments for those who are against his ban is, oh, don't blame the dogs, blame the owners. Well, yeah, I certainly do blame the owners, but it has to be asked: Why is it the bad owners? are attracted to particular breeds. You know, why is it we're not hearing about bad owners of greyhounds or golden retrievers or other breeds? Um, any dog is capable of being abused or neglected or not getting enough exercise. Oh, I've even heard it argued, oh, it's a hot summer weather. Well, if that was the case, then surely it would affect all dogs' behaviour. I mean, what about dogs that have thicker fur? Surely they'd be more agitated by hot weather. It's just, I, I've heard so many excuses that are just pathetic as a way of deflecting from the issue here namely that the breed absolutely is relevant it's just a question of common sense and I, i'm disappointed by the rspc and other charities that are kind of in denial about this i mean they're right that the there's other components they're right that there needs to be stricter vetting of who owns these dogs absolutely but i think they're absolutely wrong to say that the breed is irrelevant you know, you can have a bad owner that mistreats another breed and maybe that breed will then become aggressive because it's, it's defensive. But if you have a breed that has the evolutionary, um, you know, breeding to be more aggressive, to be more powerful, clearly that is a bigger threat to the public. So long as American bully XLs are out there, they're a threat. Now, as far as I know, with the Dangerous Dogs Act of 1991, that includes pit bull terriers, uh, Fula Brasileiros, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, Dog of Argentinos, and um, I think the other one was Japanese Tosas. Now American Bully XLs are added to that. Um, Staffordshire Bull Terriers were involved in a number of attacks in the late 2010s, but the number of attacks involving Bully XLs is just extraordinary. Um, you know, we've had something like, uh, I forget what the exact figure is, it's somewhere around the region of 20 fatal dog attacks in the last couple of years alone, half of them, half, have been American Bully XLs. You cannot tell me that the breed is irrelevant. I just think it's delusional. But I think, you know, this debate also needs to expand. I think there needs to be generally tougher penalties and irresponsible owners of any breed, even, you know, breeds that would be deemed to be less dangerous. I mean, I know when I'm in a park, and dogs run up to me. I'm not really scared of dogs. Like, you know, I've had a pet dog. Um, my family has. Um, I've, I've been around dogs. I'm not really scared of dogs. But nevertheless, I'm not that comfortable when any dog runs up to me. You know? So it's one thing letting the dog off the lead to have exercise in a park. But I think that there needs to be... I really, really cannot stand these owners that think, oh, well, my dog's harmless, so I'll just let him or her off the lead. And, oh, well, don't worry, don't worry, it doesn't hurt. They don't know that. They don't know that. The thing about all these attacks, probably most of them, is the dog in question or dogs in question probably didn't bite anyone until they did, until they savaged someone. So, you know, this idea of, oh, well, my pet can't hurt anyone, it's so irresponsible. I've seen photos of people saying, um, I trust my dog so much that I would have it next to my baby. 
and they've got an American bully XL next to a baby. As far as I'm concerned, those people need social services onto them. I wouldn't put any dog near a baby, any dog. I wouldn't even have a puppy near a baby. I mean, that is just brainless, infuriating. But there's a petition that's kicked off. It's already get, got over uh, well, almost half a million signatures, and it's basically saying, blame uh, the owners, don't blame XLs. Um, uh, I believe that XLs are beautiful, loving family pets. This isn't verbatim, but it's along these lines. Now, I'm guessing a lot of the signatures are duplicates or uh, from overseas, so hopefully it will be rejected. But this denialism and this this attitude where we care more about the reputation of a particular breed than public safety, it's I, I honestly find it quite infuriating. And, you know, I often wonder, I mean, any dog mauling is bad, but you can imagine a defenseless little child, a toddler, savaged by a dog. I can't imagine how horrible that image would be. And this is happening, you know, several times a year. Now, like I said in the last video, banning XLs won't stop dog attacks, but it will reduce the number of attacks by this breed. Because if it's like the 1991 Act, then, you know, they'll be put on muzzles. Um, and actually, attacks by those breeds that were banned have reduced since 1991. So it shows that it does have an effect on the breed in question. It won't stop dog attacks. But I think, broadly speaking, there needs to be much, much tougher penalties against irresponsible owners. This isn't just criminals, by the way. This is people who are out of their depths. Out of their depth. You know, it's not necessarily criminal elements, although often it is, but um, I think that, you know, it should be treated as like having a weapon in public. I really do, because it's dangerous. And it isn't just attacks on people. They attack other dogs. You know, they've killed people's pets. They've mauled other dogs. Um, frankly, it scares me. I mean, at this point in time, um, American Bully XLs are probably the most dangerous animal in Britain. Because we don't really have any, you know, wild reptiles or we have some birds of prey, but not often that there's been reports of attacks on humans. Sometimes cattle can be responsible for human fatalities. But I would say at this point in time, other than other humans, I would say out of control dogs are the most dangerous animal in Britain. Um, and apparently Britain ranks fourth, according to Wikipedia, for the number of fatal dog attacks. Now, I'm going to wrap this up, but I, I, I welcome the ban, absolutely, but I really think there needs to be pushback against the excuses and the nonsensical argument that the breed is irrelevant. Of course, of course, the owners are also a big factor. There's too many irresponsible people can get their hands on these animals. There's too many irresponsible breeders. And, you know, one of the things the charities have said is you can have a situation where, like, Frankenstein's monsters are created. Yeah, that's a problem. Um, so, you know, whatever legislation is brought through also needs to address that. You'll get people who are trying to get, you know, mixed Staffordshire's or mixed... I mean, the point about Bully XLs is they already have some Pitbull Terrier in them, which is already a banned breed. So I think, you know, there needs to be a much, much more scrutiny of crossbreeding. I'm suspicious of that myself. But... Um, I'm not saying that every time someone is attacked by a particular breed, just ban that breed. But when you have a trajectory where there's so many attacks by one breed, it's just common sense. So I absolutely welcome this. And I think we will see a drop now in the number of attacks. Maybe not 100%, but I think we will see a drop in the number of attacks. Um, I think that anyone who owns these should have an ultimatum to either hand them over or have to put a muzzle on them in public, um, undergo training, at, you know, and that might mean inconvenience to them, but public safety is paramount here. Um, definitely there should be much tougher vetting on who buys dogs. Um, breeding programs so needs to be much, much tougher regulation there. I think, you know, this needs to be a multi-pronged approach. Um, but I think those who say the breeder is irrelevant, I think they're being utterly reckless in claiming that. It's just nonsensical. Um, okay, let me know your thoughts.